this week I thought we would make a little thermos with the complete with a little cup that you can take on and off. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. All right, to make our thermos, we're using just scrapbook paper cardstock, kind of a heavy weight, like what you would use to make a greeting card with or to do scrapbooking, things like that. I have tons of this because I do all kinds of different crafts. So I have some red, and then I have a small piece of a design that I felt was in scale to make the designed outside portion of my thermos. So I've cut the following sizes. Now first off over here, we're going to use later, just two small scrap pieces and they're going to go off to the side. We don't need those for a little bit, but they need to match our solid color. I have a piece that is 7 eighths of an inch by 2 inches. I have a piece that's 3 fourths of an inch by 2 inches. The piece that is the design is 3 fourths of an inch by 2 inches. I have a piece 1 quarter of an inch or 1 fourth by 4 inches and I have a piece that's an eighth inch or less and it, we're only going to use a small piece of this. It needs to be, I cut 2-3 inches of it and then I'll cut off the extra. So the first thing we're going to do, and I'll show you on the first piece and then I'm going to turn the camera off so you don't have to sit through me getting this all prepped. We're going to prep our paper and kind of get it convinced that it wants to curl nicely and not split when we curl it. So we're going to start by taking a pair of scissors just like you would with a piece of curling ribbon. And by the way, my sizes are based on the, the wooden skewer and the pencil that I'm using, both of which came from Dollar Tree. Um, you might need to adjust the length of your paper or even if your paper is a little bit different weight. So I've run it on there. Now I'm going to wrap it around this bamboo skewer. What I'm doing is I'm pre-curling my paper so that when I put glue on it, it's going to want to curl. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to do that with all of these except this one. This one I'm just going to curl around the bamboo skewer. I'm not going to use the scissors because on this narrow piece, I found that that made it split. So when I get these pre-curled, I'll be back and we'll go to our next step. All right, everything is pre-curled, as you can see. And I've got some uh, tacky glue over here. I'm using a nice thick tacky glue. Use something with a low moisture. Um, now, I've so far found out, figured out on this one, I haven't had to wrap my, my pencil or my skewer with parchment paper as long as I take them off right away. So that seems to be working. Now I'm going to take, and I also have an extra pencil here because, and it's important that the one you're forming on is not sharpened because we are going to need that flat point, that flat end later. I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to mark where this comes because this area, I don't want any glue in. I want glue from this line to there, and I want glue here. Um, and this is the the widest piece, the 7 eighths inch piece. <laughs> it's always fun to try and play with, trying to work with these after you've curled them, but you've got to curl them before you put the glue on. And don't put too much on because it will ooze out and make a mess all over everything if you get too much. All right, now. Yeah. Move these over to the side so I don't lose them or knock them down or get glue all over them. Now I'm going to start rolling and I'm just rolling this around my wooden skewer. It's just one of those bamboo skewers you use like on the barbecue. And I find that if I roll it like this on the tile, it goes much tighter when it's this small. This small of a piece, it's kind of hard to get it really tight, but that does help. Now I'm going to let that sit while I get glue on, and it's going to try to unroll. Now we're going to glue the entire inside of this three quarter inch piece. Now 
Again, we want to cover the whole inside, but we don't want to put too much because we don't want it oozing out everywhere. It's got a little more underneath that edge. I want that edge to hold pretty well. I might have to go, when I turn the camera off, I'm probably going to have to go get some rubber bands and put around this. I forgot that I picked those up the other, when I cleaned the table off. Now line up the end of this one with where you ended that one and line up one edge. This one is about an eighth of an inch narrower than the other one that we put on, which is what we want. And now this is what it should look like. So I'm going to... I'm actually going to go get, turn the camera off and go get a rubber band to hold this together and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, now that will hold that together a little bit. Now we are going to take this quarter inch piece and our pencil. And mine, it did split a little bit. That's okay. We're going to put a lot of glue on here, so be okay. Now, make a mark again about where the end meet so you have the circumference of the pencil marked off about. That way we don't accidentally put glue where we don't want it. Get it started. And this one you want to make sure you keep it nice and tight and nice and straight. Come on. Ah, I'm juggling with the glue bottle with one hand. <laughs> I didn't put enough glue out. Get a little bit more glue on this. There. This one I like to take off so it doesn't stick to the pencil. There, we're going to set that off the side. Now this one is probably stuck down enough that it will stay. The glue doesn't have to be all the way dry for it to stay. The glue just has to get really sticky. Now we're going to coat this piece, the hole inside. Now you could just use a contrasting color of paper for this. This is just your outside, however you want your thermos to be. Now one thing to be note of, if your design on your paper has a top and a bottom, like say you find a cartoon character or a clouds and sky or something, make sure the bottom of your design is towards this area where we are lining up the pieces, not towards the area where we're revealing this part. Dry bond to it. Now again, we are going to line our our new cut edge up with where we left off. We're doing that so that we don't have a bunch of bumps where we have an extra layer of paper. Keep this lined up as straight as you can. And usually these papers are a little more cooperative. Oops, that one is loose. Whoopsie. Okay, pulled it all the way off. That was not what I meant to do. I wanted to pull it tighter because it wasn't as tight as I wanted it. That's okay. It's very sticky now that the glue is kind of saturated. That's better. Now it's nice and tight. Now I'm not seeing air pockets between my layers. 
So this now needs to sit, and I, I do like to take them off and not leave them on the, um, the dowel or on their forms. So I'm going to let this glue dry for a half hour or so, and then I'll be back and we'll do our next step. All right, I brought you down. I'm going to try to remember that I've done that, but I'm going to get a look at how this looks so far. So now we're going to glue these onto our, um, what will become the, well, the bottom of the cup and the bottom of the thermos. I'm going to get a little more glue out because my glue's kind of dried up and gotten nasty over there. Now we want to use enough glue that on this one that it holds really nicely. And don't worry about this edge not being absolutely perfect. We're going to hide that. So we're going to put that on there. And that needs to dry. Hopefully I was under camera for that. Now this one, I actually want to do a little bit differently. I have made several of these getting um, getting ready to do this because I came up with this idea in the middle of the night and I don't remember ever seeing it done like this. I don't remember ever seeing a thermos done this way. And I found that I really need to have quite a bit of glue in the bottom of the cup. Get that kind of leveled out. All right, now this glue needs to dry at least to the point, it doesn't have to be all the way dry, but it needs to be dry enough that it's turned pretty much clear. It can be slightly cloudy, but it needs to be pretty clear, especially the bits that have sn snuck out here. And when that is done, I'll come back and we'll trim these and we'll do our next step. All right, now that the glue on the outside of this has dried fairly well, it doesn't have to be completely dry, but pretty much, we're going to take a, and this works best with a really small, really uh, sharp pointed scissors. These are my favorite scissors for cutting little details from paper projects. And they're just some of those embroidery, those bird embroidery scissors. They're not even all that expensive. All right, so that one is trimmed. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna add to that one. I'm gonna get a little more trimmed off though. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, this one we're gonna be a little more careful with. This one's gonna show more. But it's, again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to do some, some fixing once it's trimmed back. And hopefully I'm staying under camera. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. Now I have an emery board. And there will be a white line around this on my paper because my paper is a white, has a white core. It's red on the outside and white in the middle. Uh, if you have colored paper that doesn't have that, then you won't have that little accent line. Or you could take, um, you could coat it in paint if you want to. You could paint this before we coat it with uh, Mod Podge. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to coat this with Mod Podge, which will help even it out a little bit. All right, that's about all I'm going to do there. Now we have this really narrow strip. And the narrower you can cut this, as long as it's straight, the better. We're going to line this up along the bottom. And I need a clean toothpick because that toothpick is full of glue. Am I going to about to get glue? I may actually put just a little bit of glue on here this way. I just want a little more of an area of glue. Come on. Oopsie. A little too much, but that's okay. Oh, yeah. Let's try. Now, 
Now it's really important you're working on something like the tile where this won't glue itself to it. Line up the end of the paper with our seam in our paper. Line up the bottom edge with the bottom of the thermos. And then we're going to cut it as close as we can to where it meets. We don't want it to overlap. I like to trim it back and then come back and cut it again. And I'd rather have a tiny gap than have it overlapping. And now that glue needs to dry. And when that's dry, we'll add a coat of Mod Podge. So I'll be back when it's dry. All right, our glue is fairly dry. This is still wet inside, so I'm not going to leave it on here very long. But for right now, I'm going to loosely put this onto the, the unsharpened end of my pencil. I've got a nice soft brush, and I have some satin finish Mod Podge. And I'm going to coat this. Give this a nice coat of Mod Podge, and then I want this to sit overnight. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let this part dry oh for an hour or so now I didn't push this down this is on here nice and t and lightly it's not touching the glue on the bottom I'm gonna stick this and kind of brace this up in this container this is just what I've got my toothpicks in put it out of my way here and I'm gonna put this guy back on actually I like to put it on here and I'm gonna coat this also and this also is going to sit for overnight and then tomorrow morning that will give all our Mod Podge and glue plenty of time to get completely dry before we put the cup onto our thermos. Um, make sure everything is dry before you do that. So I'm going to get this thoroughly coated. Uh, make sure I don't have any drips or anything. I'm going to let this dry overnight and we will look at this again tomorrow morning. All right, here's our little thermos we made, and our little cup goes on it just like the real thing. You can have it sitting on the counter. You could have it with a packed lunch someplace. I love how this turned out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll show you the other one I made kind of as my prototype. This one, the center sticks up a little further because I didn't line my bottoms up quite right, and I like them both. I think they both turned out really cute. I can't wait to put these into a display. So I hope you enjoyed today's project. If you did, hit the like button. Leave me a comment. If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, I encourage you to hit that subscription button and the notification bell so YouTube can let you know when I put out a new video. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.